Um, we're going to take a few minutes now and look at grief from the standpoint of King David. And I think we're, we're going to need to, to cut some of these things out because our time is going to go by too quickly. Uh, we're going to refer you, if you're following along in your Bible, if you want to take a few notes, to um, at the death of Saul and Jonathan, David actually writes his, his, his reaction in almost a poetic way. We're not going to read it in the interest of time, but it's 2 Samuel 1, verses 17 to 27. Uh, and in many places, it's called the dirge that David wrote, uh, lamenting the death of King Saul and his, his beloved friend Jonathan. The interesting thing about that, Jonathan, is that King Saul was out to kill David. That's right, he and, was. And, and many times, he, he spent time and effort hunting David down. David had opportunities to take Saul's life, but wouldn't, because he was God's anointed and when Saul dies, this man who spent the latter part of his life in search of David to try to destroy him, he utterly laments his death. And I think that gives us a, a, a look into the character of David. Mm -hmm. Now, we also know that David uh, did not lead a life of perfection, no, he to, to say the least. He made a lot of mistakes and had a lot of difficulties. And one of the end results of his difficulties was living a life filled with sorrow. And there are a couple of examples of grief that we want to just drop in on and look at, at, at David uh, dealing with that. Uh, the first is after Absalom, his son, had Amnon, his other son, slain. Let's take a look at that, Second Samuel chapter 13, verses 34 to 39. Now Absalom had fled, and the young man who was the watchman raised his eyes and looked, and behold, many people were coming from the road behind him, by the side of the mountain. Jonadab said to the king, Behold, the king's sons have come according to your servant's word. So it happened. As soon as he had finished speaking, behold, the king's son came and lifted their voices and wept. And also the king and all the servants wept very bitterly. Now Absalom fled and went to Talmiah, the son of Amahud, the king of Gasher. And David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom had fled and gone to Gasher and was there three years. And the heart of King David longed to go out to Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Ammon since he was dead. So here you have one of the greatest difficulties a parent can, can encounter, and that is the, the, the sibling rivalry, if you will, going to such an extent. And uh, his, one of his sons is dead, and at, not directly at the hands of the other son, but at the command of the other son. And his, his other son, Absalom, flees from his presence and stays away from him for a long period of time. So David experiences a loss of the life of one son and the loss of the experience of the other. And, just a, and it says he, he, he mourned for his son every day. And you look at that and you get a sense of how deeply this moves us and, and how difficult it is. But I'll just take a quick look at King David's response to the death of Absalom. Now, Absalom, Jonathan, before you read this, he was a troublemaker. Yes, he was. He was, in many respects, just evil in the things that he did. He had evil intentions, he had evil thoughts, and he carried out a lot of these things. And he brought an incredible amount of grief to David's life through his living experiences. Let's take a look at, at King David's reaction uh, once Absalom dies. Second Samuel eighteen thirty one through 33. Behold, the Kishite arrived, and the Kishite said, Let my lord the king receive good news, for the Lord has freed you this day from the hand of all those who rose up against you. Then the king said to the Kishite, is it well with the young man Absalom? And the Cushite answered, Let the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up against you for evil be as that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And thus he said as he walked, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And again, you see that reaction, Jonathan, and, and, and that reaction has a very um, significant meaning to me because in these experiences that I was telling you about, uh, especially the one with the individual who, who lost their teenage son, 
Um, I remember shortly after the experience, he called me and asked me to come over, and uh, we sat and we talked for a number of hours, and one of the things he kept saying is, I, I wanted to make a deal with God. I wanted to trade places. I would have rather been the one. And it's just heart-wrenching to see such a loss to, and, and, and to see that, that, uh, that grief that it just it overwhelms the individual. And even though Absalom was such a troublemaker, it was his son. And you can't deny that connection and you can't deny um, how important that ends up being to us. And so the message I think here is that grief is real and needs to be dealt with and it needs to be understood and we need to have compassion in looking at it. And folks, if it's uh, something you'd like to comment on, it's 860-442-9956. That's 442-WXLM. We're going to go through a couple of other examples of grieving and then we're going to go through uh, the idea of how to handle our own grief and then finally we'll deal with the idea, the thoughts of how to help others handle their grief. So that's our, our agenda, if you will, this morning. Let's look at a New Testament example. Well, actually, let's not. It's time for a break already. Sorry about that. Fred, let's go into the break at this point. Folks, we're talking about grieving. We're talking about the deep emotional distress and how to get your arms around it, understand it, and deal with it. This is Jonathan and Rick with Christian Questions on News Talk 104.7 WXLM. Stay with us. 